Welcome beyond the Reiki Gateway. I'm your host, Andrea Kennedy. Like countless others, Reiki found me when I wasn't even looking, and then it ignited a whole new world of questions. This podcast explores topics of interest for the spiritually curious. Join me for discussions and special guests on subjects such as past lives, crystal healing, spiritual awakening, ascension, energy healing, and more, all to assist and inspire you along your unique soul's journey. This episode is sponsored by Mainstream Reiki, offering live and online Reiki classes and a membership community to help Reiki practitioners succeed and grow in their practice. Find out more at MainstreamReiki.com. It's wonderful to have you here beyond the Reiki Gateway. I'm your host, Andrea Kennedy. And today I have with me Shanae Fournier. She's an evidential spiritual medium, energy intuitive, Reiki master, certified sound therapy practitioner, and an intuition and mindset mentor. She describes her work as a translation between the realms, the seen and unseen, the tangible and intangible, the mundane and the mystical sounds absolutely perfect and resonates so well with us here beyond the Reiki gateway. Shanae, so thrilled to have you with us. Thanks for saying yes. Thank you for having me. I love listening and watching your podcast. So it's just such a joy to get to be a guest. So thank you. Oh, it's just a pleasure. Total pleasure. I'm so looking forward to the conversation, uh, learning more. And you you do offer a variety of different kinds of sessions and insights for for people. And uh, I really like that. I, I like that. And I find that um, many of us in the spiritual community do that sort of thing, mm-hmm. right? Like we we learn one modality, or maybe we have gifts from an early age, and we just sort of take a path and we we pick up different skills and we're attracted to different areas in the spiritual world and can serve in so many ways. And I'm wondering, I think first right off the bat about mediumship. And we've had different mediums on the show before, but everyone is different. Uh, they're different in their approach, maybe how long they've been offering the sessions and uh, have different insights for us. And so if we could start there, um, so how long have you been doing mediumship? Because I, I, I did a little, I did a little peek and I know that you uh, are, have had gifts all the way back from when you were a child. So I, I am curious, when did you get started offering mediumship to, to others? That started back in, I want to say, 2020, as far as officially offering mediumship. Um, What I always tell people is the reason why I let my practice evolve that way, or I, I shouldn't even say let it evolve that way, it evolved that way through me, was because many years ago, when I was first starting to do Reiki, I was noticing gorgeous clairvoyant images coming through just in more than just three dimensions. It was like I was transported elsewhere. Um, Colors would come through, scents would come through. So I have clairalliance, clairaudience, clairsentience, claircognizance. I have all of those things. And I just realized at a certain point, you know, I love doing the energy healing sessions. But in addition to that, I love being able to interact with the clients and the sitters and the people who come to me to use my services and say, oh, well, are you open to hearing about this? Are you open to hearing what I'm seeing? Um, It feels like, you know, once I get the yes from them, then I would go further and I would say, it feels like I have a grandmother standing here, or it feels like I have a pet from your childhood here. So all of these images just would flood in. And I started recognizing the fact that I felt great joy in being able to share those sorts of sessions with people. Um, Now, if someone was just like, no, no, I'm really not open to that. I'd rather just receive the energy healing Then no problem. You know, I just kind of I have the ability to shut that off and ignore that. And then at a certain point, I just felt incredibly called to just really step into mediumship full force, so to say. Um, I feel like to me, it's a sacred vocation. 
I do the work with honesty, with integrity. And for me, what I started realizing was underneath all of the different ailments that the clients come to me with, underneath it all is this existential question. What is life? Why am I here? What happens after this life? And I would find that when I would start speaking through what I was seeing as a medium, it would change their whole demeanor. It would change their whole energy. So for me, I really do feel like mediumship, at least in my experience and with the clients that I work with, the mediumship is like the ultimate energy healing. Because when you can take away the person's fear or help them lose their fear of death, it allows them to live this life more fully. It allows them to express in their fullness more completely. And I really have a strong belief that, and many energy healers do, as doctors do as well, I'm sure, the body has this persistent ability to heal itself. If we can just give it that ability, like, you know, the rest and restore and relax and release, so many beautiful miracles take place in that space. And mediumship, I just feel like that's one of the ones where, I don't know, just such miraculous events take place. And all of a sudden, you'll see a person just, it feels like this weight has been lifted from them. And I see their light body become more vibrant, more luminous, more expansive. And I love it too, when they're able to say, oh my goodness, Shanae, I see what you've been talking about. I can tap into my own intuition and I can tap into my loved ones and I can get guidance from them, be it loved ones who've made their transition beyond the veil or be it their angels and guides. And so that's what I really see myself as, is someone who can teach people how to do this for themselves. And I just, I just, I don't, as you can hopefully tell by um, the tone of my voice, I'm just so honored that I get to do this work. And I'm in such awe by the end of each and every session of what I just got to experience, what I just got to witness. Yeah, I have to imagine you just can't predict how any right. of it's going to go. It's a, a, a joyful mystery that unfolds with gifts that you can't even imagine. Right. Yeah. And and you learn as they learn. Isn't that true? Yes. Yes. That's what I love about it as well is that every time I come together with somebody else in a uh, session, and this is whether it's over the internet or whether I'm just connecting with them in distant um, sessions where I'm not even interacting with them through technology, I always learn something new, not only about myself, but about that unitive field of consciousness where everything happens and everything takes place, like the field of full potentiality where anything is potentially just waiting to happen. Everything is possible. So yeah, by the end of it all, I feel like, oh my goodness, not only did I get to facilitate that, but I got to witness that. I got to, um, I, I was able to be a conduit through which something brand new came into this world, like a whole new uh, energy was expressed through myself and my interaction with the client or the sitter. Yeah, what, what an honor, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. just amazing. And so in these sessions, uh, you know, we're calling it mediumship. And mm -hmm. so can you, um, I guess what I'm going for here is, you have described seeing all kinds of things, feeling and sensing, I think, a wide array of things. Is it fair to say that they're always, these sessions are always bringing through a deceased loved one as well? Is that a common thread here? It is a common thread. However, I do have, I have interacted with some clients in the past that for whatever reason, they're not comfortable with that. So then I don't even go there. I just, you know, kind of let that part be closed off, so to say. And oftentimes I'll know ahead of time if the client is going to be open to that or not. And then even if I can kind of feel um, the spirit of the loved one 
standing close by and wanting to get information through. I just have to explain to them telepathically, but your loved one is not open to that. And I'm not going to step upon their agency, you know, their right to decide what they would like. So instead of saying, oh, I have so-and-so here, and this is the message for you. Instead, I just speak through what the message is or what might be helpful, but without saying this is a message from such and such, or this is a message from so and so. So you can just kind of in the moment on the fly, translate, well, how can I bring this through as information, but not as a message that, you know, might make the client feel uncomfortable. But honestly, these days, most clients that find me, they're totally wide open to the mediumship, especially because if they've come to me through my website, they know what I do. So they're going to choose me because they know that this is what I can do. And um, those are the sort of sessions that really enliven me. And if they're not open to that, they'll probably search out a, a Reiki practitioner who doesn't also do mediumship. Yeah, correct. You know, you mentioned uh, fear mm -hmm. uh, earlier and Wow, I'm I'm so all in about this because as you described how their energy changes and this fear is lifting mm -hmm. away from from them. Yeah, it it's sort of like the fear to me is like a dampening to the system, you know, like a wet blanket on their right. on their energy and their potential. Um and I think that Fear these days seems to be such a big theme for people. It's almost like I don't know what your sense is, and and I'd be I, I guess this is why I'm asking. I I want to know what your sense is about this because it seems like in years past we didn't talk that much about fear. It was just mm -hmm. like healing this or that or whatever. But it seems like our awareness in a more collective way is really calling it out for what it mm. is and labeling fear in a way that just seems different to me. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I have, a, a, I guess, a very personal viewpoint of fear in that I don't believe that fear is this external energy. I don't feel, I don't believe in evil. I don't believe in negative spirits. I don't believe that there is anything inherently to be feared. Um, I believe that this whole beautiful, gorgeous universe, all of creation, all of existence is inherently good. And um, like I said, since I've been able to tap into consciousness, I've been able to tap into beings and spirit um, since I was a child, I've just always known that actually there is more to be worried about in the physical realm for people hurting you or interactions not going well. There's really nothing to fear in the realm of spirit. So I believe that what happens is if the practitioner is like, oh, well, I have to do all these things to, to protect myself and I have to do this and do that and do this invocation and oh my goodness, if I forget to do this, something negative is going to come in. I think that translates directly into your client and it brings out a bit of a fear energy that's in their own personality. So I honestly believe that what happens is our minds can sometimes get the best of us, right? Our thought processes can get the best of us. And so you walk into this darkened room, let's say, and you're like, oh, what was that noise? Or, oh, what's over there in the corner? And then your mind just goes crazy. Like, oh my goodness, what's in the corner? What should I be worried about? And then you kind of, you, you feed your own um, and I don't, I, I can't really think of a different word to use in energy, but I don't believe that fear is an energy. I believe that it's almost like an overlay, but you kind of, you, it's like you're adding fuel to the fire. So you can kind of go deep into being afraid of things. And then you're like, oh, see, there's things to be afraid of, but there really isn't. There, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there really aren't things to be afraid of, especially not in the realm of spirit. So what I always tell people is, if you just really truly believe that all of creation, all of this beautiful world, all of existence is inherently good, then you realize that when other people are afraid of things, they're putting 
energetic signatures and kind of patterns of energy out into the ether, you know, into this collective field of consciousness. And then when you're around that kind of a person, you can find yourself being more fearful. Or maybe that person was just in the room that you were in. And just like we are shedding skin cells every moment of our life, our energy body is shedding energetic signatures all throughout our life. We're kind of shedding photons and particles of life, uh, particles of light throughout our life. And so you can sort of leave an energetic signature of fear behind if you're fearful. And um, one of the stories that I have is that when I lived in Oregon, there was a woman who lived, who had lived in a house that I was renting and had rented it uh, briefly, and she had made her transition in the house. And so her energetic signature was still there. But at that time, I, you know, I didn't have this language to use for that. All I knew is that there was this, it felt like a presence in the house that just didn't feel comfortable. So I allowed myself to be fearful of that and just not be comfortable living there. And there were other reasons also why I ended up moving out, but I did end up moving out. Um, but then the next house that I rented also in Oregon also had a, a, a a spiritual presence there. But this spiritual presence was very playful and very fun. And there was nothing to ever be afraid of with that um, spiritual, play, uh, spiritual presence. And then maybe two years later, I moved back to California. I was living behind a house in a little cottage. And somebody had died by suicide in the basement of the front house. I didn't know that ahead of time. All I knew was that when I was in the house, I didn't really feel all that comfortable being in the house in the kitchen at nighttime. And I didn't know why. So that one night the person uh, of the who owned the house was out of town and he had asked me, can you go get some papers out of the kitchen? And I said, well, I'm not really comfortable being in the kitchen at nighttime. There's just some odd feeling there. And he said, oh, oh, didn't you know somebody had died by suicide in the basement um, many, many years previously? And I said, oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. That would have been good to have known that ahead of time. So I actually took a stick of incense and I went down in the basement, said some prayers and just used the incense to clear the space and used my intentions and was just basically speaking out loud. You know, if there is any energetic essence or energetic signature still left here, any part of this person's spirit or soul kind of lingering, you know, just go ahead and go into the light. There's nothing for you here. Um, the light is beautiful. Go on to what comes next. Be free. And then maybe within the next 24 to 48 hours, I was sleeping in a loft, uh, in my loft in my uh, little cottage. And I was deep asleep. And I felt this heaviness just kind of press against me. But I wasn't afraid. I woke up. And I realized, okay, well, this is not sleep paralysis because I can look around and I can talk and I can move. And I realized, oh, I know what this is. I'm getting a hug from the presence of that energy thanking me for releasing his fully his energy from the basement. Now, I don't believe that spirits or souls get stuck places because we're so much bigger than just this personality. We're so much bigger than one lifetime. But I do believe that a part of our focus can get stuck somewhere. And so, he was just giving me a hug. And it was really funny because I said out loud, okay, you're welcome. But when I said that you needed to leave that house and that basement and be free, I didn't mean you could come and be with me. So you do have to keep moving. So thank you for the hug. You know, thank you for this loving feeling. But now do go on to the light, go elsewhere, go with your loved ones, go where they are, you will be happy. And then I felt the weight lift off. I took a deep breath, I felt the energy change, and then I didn't feel his presence anymore or his energy. So the reason why I use that story is because to me, it just illustrates, I could have gone into fear. And I could have been, first of all, I could have been like, I'm never going in that house again. Well, no, there's no reason to not go into that house again. When I felt that weight, I could have immediately gone to fear and thought, oh my goodness, now I'm stuck with his energy for the rest of my life. Well, but there is nothing to fear. All is good. All is God. All is source. There is nothing but goodness in what I've been shown. So for me, fear is a concept. It doesn't even have to be an emotion. It isn't an energy. It's a concept 
or it's a very, very subtle energy signature. And I think Eckhart Tolle talks a lot about the pain body, and I would add to that the fear body. So I think collectively, what's been happening all across the whole globe, the internet is partly because of it, you know, we're able to see what's going on worldwide 24 seven. In addition to that, the pandemic really ramped up the global atmosphere of um, fear. And so I think that that might be why so many people are now talking about fear is that they're becoming much more aware of it because of all of it flowing into us through the internet. Um, the other thing too, is I do believe that like many teachers have said before, you can't really heal something until you see it. So I think the reason why the fear is rising to the surface the way that it is, is so that then it can be um, felt. And as I'm saying this, I'm getting like what I call spirit shimmers on the top of my head. And that for me is like an exclamation point from spirit. Like, yes, this is true. As a human race, we're not going to be able to move beyond fear and heal it until we actually turn and face it and see it and move beyond it. Now, that doesn't mean turn and face it and dive into it and really like, you know, steep yourself in it. It just means, okay, become aware of it. And then when you be can become aware of it, or then when you do become aware of it, you're able to heal it. You're able to say, okay, I see that. And I'm sure you have stories where when you allowed yourself to go into fear, you spiraled. I have those stories where you spiral into fear and it's hard to get back out. But when you kind of catch it and you name it, so you witness it, you name it, and then you say, okay, but I'm just not going to go there. And you just truly let it move on through. And the more you practice that, the easier it gets. When I very first tried that, it wasn't super easy because the mind wants to attach a storyline to it. But then I thought, oh, well, wait a minute. What if I really truly do just observe this and see where this goes? And then it's almost like because a drama doesn't get attached to it, it gets bored. <laughs> I'm speaking about it like it's some external entity and it's not. But I think what it is is that the brain gets bored. Because the brain and the mind, I do see as two separate, separate things. But I think the brain or the human psyche gets bored and it's just like, oh, okay, well, there's no charge here. The trigger didn't, um, it, nothing got triggered. So I'm just going to move on through. And then you sit in the peace and the silence and you think, well, oh my gosh, this feels so good. And so that's what I like to do with fear is realize, well, fear doesn't feel good. So let it go. And then what does feel good, reach for that better thought and reach for that um, in addition to that, whenever I have things that feel really heavy and maybe are going to cause fear or cause deep sadness, I ask my angels to help me and I can truly physically help them, like support me. I can lean back into them and I can feel them. And they really do truly remove fear for me or remove sadness and grief. So I think that it's, it's just, it's so much easier to not even get wrapped up in fear when you recognize that there really isn't anything to fear. Well, I would, I, I beautifully said, you know, so much there was phenomenal. Um, but what I'll say too, what I'm, what I'm hearing as an undercurrent really is about empowerment. Mm -hmm. and sovereignty in our energy right. and being right. responsible for our thoughts and therefore our experience. And mm -hmm. so I really love that because um, as we become more aware, oh my goodness, then the possibilities for us really open up. You know, we're just not drifting along, uh, right. bumping into things. We can, you know, uh, claim things. And, uh, you know, you mentioned about um, saying things out loud, saying your intentions and things like that, which I think that is for me in my life personally, that is one of the things I do. And it mm. is hugely impactful. It is how it is how we wield our free will and our power. And I think people overlook that because it's like, well, I just said something out loud. It's like, no, 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 no. Demonstrate your intention uh claim this in your personal power and that's not nothing right right 
That is so true. Yeah. 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 You mentioned angels and, and, uh, as well. And I totally want to get into that as well. I mean, there's so much really I want to <laughs> talk about, but I want to stick with the mediumship just a little bit. Is there one message, one big theme that consistently comes through in the sessions that um, you have with people? Yes, there's an overarching, the very, very big takeaway message that always comes through is there is no death. There really, truly is no death. This right here that we call human existence, it is a very small portion of what our soul, our spirit, our light body, our essence, whatever words you want to use, um, that's a very small um, thing of what's actually taking on, uh, taking place on a grander stage. And so no um, fear of death. Death is not a thing. This life is just a beautiful expression of source, a beautiful expression of the angels, a beautiful expression of our light body. But more comes after this. And what does come after this is more than we can ever even imagine. So sometimes when I'm even trying to describe what I'm seeing in these realms, it's hard because it's, you know, it's all ineffable. It really is ineffable. I try to bring, you know, give words to the colors that I'm seeing and the dimensions that I'm seeing, but it's hard. It's more like I wish that I could just, well, I could, I, you know, telepathically just convey to you what this is, and then that's going to come through your lens. But so don't fear death and don't fear life because a lot of people, they actually fear life. And you're right about speaking out loud and really truly owning your sovereignty, right? Being this person going through life with agency and utilizing it. For some people, and this is a message that comes through too, is that we don't, we don't recognize our power. And if we start to recognize it, sometimes we're afraid of it. Because then we recognize, well, wait a minute, if I really am this powerful, and it really is up to me, then it's an inside job. <laughs> yes. like, I really have to do this work to, yeah. to, to have the life that I want. And I love that. And I'm getting the spirit shimmers again, which is, yeah, you are the one you've been waiting for. I'm the one I've been waiting for. It is an inside job. And another strong message that comes through is love ourselves let ourselves off of the hook. So often throughout the day, are you, if, maybe, maybe you and I and others, maybe we are thinking of beautiful things, but so, so many people, and especially the clients that come to me throughout the day, they are second guessing themselves. They are letting a storyline replay in their head over and over again on a loop that pulls them down, that is self-critical. And I think, okay, well, but the message that always comes through is let yourself off of the hook. You do have all of the answers. Yeah, maybe you could have handled that conversation differently. Maybe you could have responded differently in that situation. But learn from it. Move on. Step into your power. Empower yourself. Seek the answers within you. Listen to your intuition. Uh, the other thing that always comes through is there is a difference between preference, desire, and intuition. Sometimes all three of those things can line up, and sometimes they don't line up. And your intuition is telling you one thing, and your desire is telling you another. And then you have to decide, oh, well, which one do I listen to? And so what the guidance is that comes through all the time is listen to the intuition. If you follow your intuition, you're not going to be led astray. And intuition, when something is coming through that, it feels calming. Even if it's not the answer you want to hear, it calms you. You might not want to hear that answer, but you're like, oh, okay, well, wait a minute. That feels kind of calming. It feels soothing. It feels like the answer. Like we'll be drawn to the correct answer. So I think another message that comes through is allow yourself to be drawn to the answer. Allow the answers to come through us. Um, and another really big one is all of creation, all that exists, all of this dimension and other dimensions, inherently good. Nothing to fear. Um, like, I, like I mentioned earlier in the interview, there are things to worry about here in the physical realm. But there's nothing to worry about in the realm of spirit. 
So if anybody ever even fears death because they fear like they're going to be judged or they wish they had done their life differently, the only person who's ever going to judge you is your own self. So just let yourself off the hook, love yourself, step into your own power, own that, and use it well, you know, use it for good, use it in a loving manner, because that's going to draw even more of your own life force energy into you. Oh, yeah. Ooh, so beautiful. It's like, <laughs> I've got to take notes on all of that. Um, yeah. So if this life is just a little fraction, you know, mm. of, of our experience, isn't that so ironic? Because to people here, it's like everything, you know, which I think is one of the reasons that we feel like we have to fill out our our scorecard and check all the boxes. Right. You know, we have this illusion of limited time to get it all done. And so what, what can you share about the, the majority then of our experience as, as a soul then? So if this is just one little glimmer, um, what have you learned about the rest of it? Hello, it's Andrea, and in addition to being your host here at the podcast, I'm the founder of Mainstream Reiki, where bringing Reiki further into the mainstream is my mission. I offer quality Reiki classes of all levels to students attending live from around the world, and I've built a membership community as well to help Reiki people connect with each other through discussions, events, and Reiki practice. So if you're considering learning Reiki, or you already have, I invite you to visit MainstreamReiki.com to discover your next step in your Reiki journey. Thank you. And now, back to the show. What I've learned, and I will try my best to put this into, you know, spoken English here or spoken human language here, is that what we can imagine I mean, take that and multiply that just by millions and billions and trillions. I mean, it is beautiful beyond measure. Um, we can experience whatever we want. We can have multiple experiences simultaneously. And in fact, the image that has come through to me, oh my goodness, this image came through to me probably 14, 15 years ago when I was working with one of my uh, clients with Reiki, this image came through of, at least when I was in school, we had those things called overhead projectors and you have the light box and the multiple transparencies. Each one of those transparencies is just like incredibly thin and translucent, transparent. And so you have the light box, you have the light, the source of the light, and then you have each individual transparency. And I don't know if you remember those. I but, do. Okay. So you would have your first transparency that maybe was the human body, but it was just the outline. And then the second transparency might be the organs. Then the third transparency might be the cardiovascular system. Then the fourth transparency, on and on and on and on and on. So what I was shown in one of the sessions with my clients was that's what like that that's what reality is like in the human form is that we are actually the light that's shining through it all and then we have the physical body and then we have the various systems and then we have the storylines and then we have xyz we have all these transparencies that build up but no you know you can get probably 100 transparencies stacked there and it's still tiny and so I think what they were trying to show that my guides were trying to show when they dropped that image in for me is that we are existing in various dimensions, densities, realities, planes of existence simultaneously. And if we can focus on the fact that throughout all of that, we are the light shining through it. We aren't the storylines. We aren't the experiences. We are the light shining through it all. And that ultimately is a source energy. It is the angelic realm. It is, you know, fill in the blank. Or you can focus on one of those transparencies and you can get really caught up in that one transparency, which for me, the transparencies are um, representing the parallel universes or the parallel dimensions. So what I've been shown is if you just want to feel completely at ease, at peace, if you're feeling kind of discombobulated or out of sorts, 
bring yourself back to the memory that you are that light. You know, yes, in this human form, we are the experiencer, but we are simultaneously that which is being experienced. We are that which is creating the experience and that it's all just story. It's all just storyline. So we have the ability to rewrite our story. We have the ability to edit our story and to step into a new story. And back in the day when, when I was in school and you would have those transparencies, when they were out of alignment, they were blurry. And then when you got them into alignment, they were clear. So for us, or for me anyway, what I've been shown is that each and every day, if we just work on having our own systems in beautiful alignment, they can be in what I would call like the, it's like, it's, I think the term that came through for me was the harmonics of the universe. You can be in harmony with the universe. You can be in harmony with all of creation, but m equally as important is that you're in harmony in all of your systems within your own self. And then it's much easier to then tap into the realms of spirit because um, there's also this, I, I've brought this up in other podcasts is that there's this debate of where does the sky begin? Does it begin one inch above the terra firma above the ground or does it begin miles up above us? And so immediately when I read that, I thought, oh, okay, well, where does the spirit begin? Where does the spirit realm begin? Does it begin? in our body, an inch away from our body, or really far away from our body. Because I believe a lot of people have this conception that spirit realm is really far away. But back to those transparencies, no, the spirit realm, the spirit realm is an overlay right on top of this realm. So heaven and earth can merge together. And earth is a neighborhood, let's say, of the heavenly realm, of the cosmic realm, of the spirit realm. And so I believe that when you can recognize that spirit is not far away, spirit is right here. Spirit is in every breath that I take. Spirit, in fact, is in my mitochondria. It's in every cell in my body. It's in every neuron of my body. And when I look out to the natural world around me, I had this beautiful image drop in for me the other day where there are grids of light surrounding every leaf on every tree and every insect and every bird. And then I got really quiet and looked internally and I recognized grids of light are surrounding every cell in my body and every part of me, even the interstitium, like every part of me is light. And so when you can recognize that, then you can recognize well, spiritual life and physical life, they don't have to be two separate things. You can merge them. But I do then also recognize that at times I have to be much more focused on my physical life <laughs> so that I can drive my car safely and so I can interact with people and I can have agency in this world because spirit chose to come into me in human form and come into everything in human, for, uh, human form, animal form, tree form, water form, to have an experience of, well, what is it like to be in this physical realm? Consciousness getting to know itself through this beautiful created reality. So I'm not even sure if I answered your question, because I always just follow the guidance that's coming through when I'm talking, and I realize I touch on all different things. But did I actually answer the question? <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't remember what the question was, but it doesn't really matter because that was great. I was there with you the whole time. So um, it's about the journey, right? Not the destination. True. So uh, True. no worries about that. But as you're talking, you know, I'm wondering also, because our conversation is really emerging for me as though everything's connected. There's a oneness, there's, you know, all of this. But at the same time, it's individuated. Mm -hmm. And we talk about angels and spirit guides. And so you also offer sessions, um, readings, angel mm -hmm. and spirit guide readings. So how do angels and spirit guides fit into this... Um, reality, for lack of a better word, you know, in quotes, right? But how do they fit in to our experience uh, in this lifetime? 
So first I want to highlight, I love that you use that term individuated because last night as I was walking my dog, just this beautiful imagery dropped in of each one of us is an individuated portion of source, an individuated expression of source. So while we are here, we are distinct but not different. So we each came here with our own individual personalities and traits and abilities and interests, which is incredibly important because just like diversity is important for all of life and all systems here in the physical world, it's also important in the realm of spirit. We don't just all of a sudden become homogenized. What's that word? Homogenized. We don't just all of a sudden become homogenized when we get into spirit and just no longer have our individuality. If we want our individuality in spirit, we certainly can have it. You know, whatever we want to be and do, when we're in the spirit realm, we can be and do. And we can even experience that even while we're here in physical form. So for me, angels and guides, um, I kind of use those words interchangeably because my guardian angel can also be my spirit guide. My spirit guide is also angelic. Um, I also believe that, um, at least for me, my experience has been that with four of the dogs that have been in my life, each one of those dogs were an angelic expression. So it was an angel that agreed to come into a limited physical form that then took the shape of a dog so that I could look into the eyes of my dog and just have unconditional love because I don't have children in my life. You know, so I, had, I have this unconditional love for this other being. And I see that love reflected back to me by looking into their eyes. And so at a certain point, I realized, oh, these are my angels in physical form, some of my angels in physical form. And then once they leave this physical realm, they're not dogs in heaven or dogs in the spirit realm. We don't have pets in the spirit realm. So I believe that when we make our transition, our loved ones that are incredibly important to us, be it people or pets, will greet us in their familiar form, a form that we can recognize and feel at home and loved by. And then as soon as we recognize them and we're comfortable now being out of physical form and back in the spirit realm, they let us see them in however they would like to express, which is not typically going to be, you know, a limited form anymore. So angels and guides for me are once again it's an individuated expression of source energy and they agreed to be an angel form they agree i do resonate with the philosophy that our angels chose us and that they have been with us since the beginning of time they were with us in our mother's womb they will be with us beyond this physical life they are a portion of source that is further along the path of spiritual evolution than I am. So my angels are able to guide me because not only do they have a larger view than I have and a much deeper understanding than I have of all of reality, but because they're further along the path of spiritual evolution, they can guide me better than even my higher self could guide me. So I actually believe that I have like this spiritual entourage. I have guardian angels. I have spirit guides. I have my true higher self, which is largely in the spirit realm, but also focused on this, you know, sacred human form here. And then I also have the angels that came into physical form and were my dogs. Those are all a part of my gorgeous angelic soul family team um, of just this soul family of light is what I call them. So. They are with me by choice, and they are focused solely on me. And I believe that each and every being, whether they are human or animal, they all have their beautiful team of light, their soul family of light that surround them. Um, for some people, the terminology angels or spirit guides don't resonate with them, and that's fine. These beings of light and these beings of pure energy are still going to be with them, guiding them. Uh, they don't need for us to acknowledge them or believe in them. Like we don't have to believe in the concept of gravity, but we're going to feel the effects of gravity if we step off of a high surface. But when we do acknowledge the angels and we talk to them and we interact with them, that then is us using our agency to say, welcome, guide me. I am ready to listen. And the way that they communicate with us is through intuition. 
And what I really love is that they will let their presence be known in physical form. So I have had a number of situations throughout my life where it could have gone badly and I could have actually left this physical realm because of silly choices that I made. And in each and every one of those moments, a physical being showed up almost as if out of nowhere and saved me and kept me alive. So they can come into physical form when needed, um, but mostly they will just be there with us and um, just waiting for us to call on them. But even if we don't call on them, they can still help us. We do have free will and they won't interfere with that. But if it's a situation where they know it's not our time yet to make our physical transition and they need to step in to help us, they will. Um, and in fact, one of the really beautiful situations that happened within this past year was I had had a situation where I had to help one of my sweet dogs transition, so I had to euthanize him. And as he was, and it was here in this beautiful healing oasis, so it was at home. And the vet was here. And after she administered the euthanasia drug, I already knew when he was gone because I saw gold particles of light rise up and leave his body. But I didn't want to interfere with the vet, so I didn't say, oh, he's already, you know, he's already made his transition. So I let her use her stethoscope and listen for his heartbeat and confirm, yes, he's no longer in that physical form anymore. So what was really beautiful is that, I don't know, probably about a week or so after that, I just, I couldn't stop crying. I was laying in bed and tears were just streaming down my face. And I really didn't want to cry because, you know, when you cry, you get stuffy, you can't breathe. And I just wanted to sleep. I just yeah. needed sleep. And, but the tears just kept streaming down. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go to sleep crying because I need sleep. And then maybe two or three hours later, I'm not even sure because you get timeless when you're in these liminal spaces. I woke up and I, I saw silhouettes in my room and they were large, they were immense. And I just opened my eyes and I looked up in the direction of where they were and I just knew that they were there to help me. So I just thanked them and I went back to sleep. I woke up a few more times throughout the night and kept seeing the silhouettes in my room and I knew that some beautiful thing was transpiring. I just didn't know what at that moment. Then I woke up the next morning and I felt so much lighter. I felt different. I felt as though some major transformation had happened. A metamorphosis had taken place. And then probably another couple of days went by and I realized, oh, so my angels that night were there alchemizing the pain and the sorrow and the sadness and the grief. And they were taking it out of my um, my energetic energy field. They were taking it out of my energy body, out of my psyche, out of my soul, and they were absorbing it for me and transmuting it and then releasing it as light. So, and, and on that particular night, I didn't even say, dear angels, can you come, come and please remove this from me? So they just knew that they have my permission to always do whatever needs to be done. And they just really lightened that grief for me. And so, of course, I still have sorrow and grief and sadness because he was what I call my soul dog. He was just a very special animal in my life. But not only is he still present in my life as one of my angels, but so is one of my other dogs. And they are on my uh, mediumship team. So that when I'm getting ready to do a mediumship reading, all of my angels are always with me anyway, because they are the translators between the realms. And then they allow me to see what needs to be spoken through for the client and the sitter. But yeah, these two beautiful beings that were dogs in physical form, but are now angels, they're a part of my, um, my, my mediumship team. Wow. Yeah, you do use the terms differently than a mm -hmm. lot of people do. Yeah. So yeah, so I appreciate hearing about that. Now, in in your work how is it it's kind of crowded i have to say you've got a lot going on so my question for you is how do you know that you and and i don't i maybe i'm assuming that you know individually i don't know but there are a lot of ways we can communicate right? And you mentioned the different clairs that you have and that kind of thing. How do you know, or do you, exactly where the information's coming from? Is that even important, I guess, is another question. 
Um, and one of the reasons I ask is, and you've mentioned the word telepathy mm -hmm. uh, before in the conversation. Um, you know, it is possible for us to pick up telepathically from the client. So how is it that you um, differentiate or know uh, or have certainty about where the information is coming from in your sessions? There's definitely a different texture, a different feeling when I am tapping into something which is coming from the sitter's um, energy field or from them telepathically. There's a different feeling. There's almost like an urgency. There's a feeling of, oh, I'm, I, I hope that this is what I hear. I hope that this is what I hear. So I can, I can actually feel beyond that. And I also will usually set the intention ahead of time to their loved one that wants to come through, or if it's an angel or a guide, I set the intention, please let it be that I am hearing from the loved one in spirit, from the angel, from the spirit guide. Let that be the loudest voice in the room, so to say, so that when that's coming through, I can know for sure that I'm picking this up mediumistically and not psychically. Um, plus, like I said, there, since there's a different, and the, the words that are coming through is texture and flavor. There's just a different feeling when I'm picking up something from someone psychically. And it's, it's just, it's, it's really hard to even put words to, but it, it has a different dimensionality to it. Um, there's just, it's different. There's more light when I'm, when I'm actually interacting with spirit and bringing things through mediumistically, there's a lightness of being, there's a love, there's a joy, there's an expansiveness. If I'm tapping into someone psychically, it's a smaller feeling. Um, and like I said, I also do set the intention that I don't pick up information psychically, that I'm truly picking it up mediumistically. So I'm also very careful when I interact with people that I don't, let's see, how to really say this word, like, sometimes, in fact, when I'm doing the readings with them, I will be looking above them or around them, oftentimes directly at them, but oftentimes just kind of around them as well, so that I'm also not picking up cues like cold reading kind of cues from mm -hmm. their um their facial expressions but yeah there's just a depth to it when i'm bringing through things mediumistically also when i'm doing a reading i'll bring through what's called evidence and oftentimes people will get back to me after the reading and they'll say oh yeah i remember that thing that you brought through that i thought no that didn't make any sense well i checked with my mom or my grandmother or my husband or my child and they're like yeah yeah no they confirmed that for me so i couldn't have been picking it up from them psychically because they didn't even at that moment know it and also what's really interesting is that the beings in spirit, they can help affect this physical reality immediately. With one of the mediumship readings that I was doing, I actually brought through someone's father. And um, I said, okay, so one of the signs that he's going to send you is that he's going to flicker the lights. And so if you haven't already had that happen, keep an eye open for that. And so she had to actually excuse herself to let her dog go out to go um, to the bathroom during the reading, which she said, oh my goodness, this never happens. My dog never you know, interrupts me when I'm on uh, the computer and I had just let him out before the session. So I don't even know why he needs to go out. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, that's okay. I'll wait. And so she was gone for about five, four or five minutes and she came. She, she came back and she had this beautiful look on her face and she said, oh, you'll never guess what happened. I said, the lights flickered, didn't they? She said, yes. I walked through a room to let my dog out to go to the bathroom. And as I walked through this room, the lights flickered. So two points come through there. Had her dog not needed to go to the bathroom, she wouldn't have walked through that room to let him outside. And then the father was able to immediately in real time flicker the lights. So. That's also where I'm able to have confirmation that, yes, I'm doing this work mediumistically, not psychically, because I'm not flickering the lights. You know, right. I'm not even thinking, yeah. can I flicker those lights? Right. <laughs> yeah. The dog and the father were in cahoots. Exactly. I mean, they worked that all out, didn't they? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, when you're in sessions with people, is it pretty important? Do they have... Um, a desire, a need to know who their guides are? Is that something you provide? Because and the reason I'm asking is 
you know, we were talking about fear earlier and awareness and things like that. And I think as we become more aware and we look beyond, you know, our day to day and we want help, we want support. And when we hear that it's available, a lot of us want to tap into that. And so I would imagine, you know, uh, I would imagine you have clients and they want to know who are my guides and then uh, name, rank and serial number probably. Right. And then, you know, how to connect and how, and how to move forward with them. But um, do you do that? I mean, do, can you, do you identify them? Is that even important? Okay, so what the angels always say is that it's not important to them as these angelic beings because they don't have to take any specific form. They can express however they want to express. But they know that we as humans, we like to have it, them personified, right? So for some people, the angels might be immense and have wings. For some people, they might be more, you know, kind of small and intimate and right beside them. For some people, X, Y, Z, you can fill in the blank. So the angels always make it perfectly clear that they will show through for us however we need them. So if I am interacting with someone and they want to know, what are my guides' names? What are my angels' names? As you said, you know, name, rank, and serial number. I'll always just say, well, you know what? Instead of me bringing through a name for you, why don't we do this meditation together? And then I will get you into this beautiful open state. I mean, I don't get someone there. I help them get themselves there. I'm very careful with my, my verbiage and my language. But let's just get you into this wide open state of just stillness and belief. Because there is that saying, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. It's like, well, no, you'll see it when you believe it. So really allow yourself to get into that altered state of awareness where the liminal, can, you're in that liminal state of being. And then you ask your angels and you ask your guides, what is your name? Most likely the answer is going to be, what would you like to call me? You know, you choose the name for me. I'm fine with that. Um, for some people, they have a name immediately drop in. And for some people, they're like, you know, I don't know. Let me think about that. And then at some point, they'll come back with a name or they'll say, you know what? I don't have to know a name. It's completely unimportant. And I said, that's true. So if it's important to you to have a name for the angels or the guides or to personify them or to bring them into animal form, for some people, it's the animal spirit guide that they really resonate with. So What's shown through to me and what's been given me, what's been um, shown to me is it's up to us. If we want to personify them, go for it. If we want to give them a name, go for it. Um, so really, it's for us. It's for our sake. But if someone's really having a difficult time with it, then I'll just get really quiet and I can look at them and I can psychically tap into, okay, well, this is what it feels like you would like for your angel to look like and this is what it feels like you would like for their name to be and 100 percent of the time it's like oh yeah 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 that makes sense that makes sense and they get really excited so i was able to psychically tap into telepathically type uh, um telepathically tap into what they're hoping but for some reason they weren't ever able to see that for themselves because for some people, they get caught up in the idea of, is this just my imagination? And what I say to them is, well, let's look at the word imagination. In that word, you have image, right? So one of the ways that we are able to telepathically communicate is through images. I don't ever have sentences come through telepathically. I have clairvoyance come through. I have images come through. I have whole packets of information come through, usually in just a knowing in just this information that downloads. So, and I've kind of lost my train of thought. Um, so if you're, so, okay. So if I'm telepathically kind of tapping into this person's consciousness, I can see an image of, well, what resonates with them? And, and in fact, I'll share another story, which is, and I'll kind of get back to imagination. I'll share another story to show that this is not imagination. 
So imagination gets a bad rap, right? Because yes, you can use your volition and make up things in your imagination, or you can be open and allow spirit to drop images into you through your imagination. And so that's the way I prefer to use the word imagination. But one evening I was in bed, I was living by myself and I was in bed. My dogs were in bed with me and I woke up to two men standing at the foot of my bed. Now, whenever beings and spirits show up, it never scares me. I know the difference immediately between a physical person standing there and a, a being in spirit standing there. So two men were standing at the foot of my bed, just staring at me. And when I opened my eyes and looked at them, it was almost like, you know, how when you're looking at someone and you recognize that they see you're looking at them, it brings you into a different, oh, oh, she sees me kind of a thing. So it was really cute. They had this energy about them like, oh, good, she's awake. She sees us. And telepathically, they conveyed to me that they're here to introduce themselves and let me know that they're here to protect me. Now, at that time, my logical mind is still trying to figure out why can I see the door? Oh, that's right. I can see the door behind them because they're translucent. You know, they're, I can see the door behind them. I can see the, the lock on my bedroom door. And my, my logical mind is thinking, how did you get in here? My front door is locked. My bedroom door is locked. <laughs> so I'm still coming out of that liminal stage. And now I'm fully awake and I'm interacting with them telepathically. And they were just letting me know, we're just here to introduce ourselves and, and let you know that we're here to keep you safe. And the reason why I can tell you this is not my imagination and not a dream is because if I were to make up and, you know, just kind of imagine and pretend what my spirit guide and my angels might look like, they would probably be immense and etheric and have the wings and maybe glow with this beautiful golden aura. Or maybe they would be this Amazonian woman because I'm here in feminine, you know, feminine form in this lifetime, a divine feminine expression in life, with also with divine masculine, um, you know, a, a combining of the two. But no, they came through as two white men from the Wild West days dressed like sheriffs, you know, the beige clothing, the silver sheriff star and the deputy behind them. And the deputy was staying very quiet and just the main sheriff was talking. And so I was kind of giggling like, this is really interesting. This is a really interesting way to be, you know, for you to be expressing yourselves. Um, so then at some point I out of my body, I kind of got up out of my body and walked them to the front door. And I could see through them, like, see, the front door is locked. So my brain is still doing this thing like, okay, what's going on here? And then I just laughed again. And then I, you know, and I, I didn't escort them out of my house because they stay with me. But, but what happened was when I then brought my light body back to my physical body and went back to bed, then that beautiful expression, that form, that form that came through so I could see with my actual physical eyes, not just clairvoyantly, um, dissipated into light. And so for me, that long answer is just a way of saying they're not stuck in a specific form. And they can come through in our imagination, but they are so much more than just our imagination. They can use our imagination to get through to us. And then once we start trusting that, we can switch from imagination to clairvoyance. And we can actually start seeing into the spirit realm what's going on around us. Now, I do need, I think anyone who has these abilities, we do need to know how to shut those off because that way, you know, you don't find yourself speaking out loud to your angel in the middle of a grocery store, you know, with people right. looking at you like, who are you talking to? Unless you have the earbuds in. You know? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Wow. Yeah. So, Shanae, I, I can't believe that the time has flown by so quickly. I, I have about 10 more questions I could ask you, I think. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap up. But um, I guess, uh, is there any last thing that you want to uh, convey to the listeners or the audience on YouTube uh, about, about this subject? I think, yes, the, what's coming through that the angels really want to get through is that if we could see ourselves the way that our angels and spirit guides and our ancestors of the light see us, we would just be blown away. We are beings of light. I mean, as you know this with your physics background, everything is just energy. We are beings of light. Our mitochondria, actually, I believe that's the right terminology I'm using, actually give off light. When you look at the human body under the proper scientific instruments, we emit light. We are beings of light. It's just that the light 
is slowed down so much more in physical form so that we can have a human experience. But the angels, the guides, they all want us to know, start seeing ourselves as sacred, as holy, as divine, as beings of light. Because when you move through your world seeing yourself as a being of light, your decisions become so much more divinely inspired and your life will start just unfolding in front of you and unfurling in front of you more beautifully than you ever could have imagined and trust that. I can't think of a better message to end with, Shanae. That's just beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us and for everyone interested in reaching out, learning more about you, um, how can they best do that? Um, I have a website, which is shanaefournier.com, and um, that's not phonetically unless you speak French. So, you know, so um, you know, hopefully they will be listed in the um, podcast here. But yes, Absolutely. my first and last name.com. Um, I am going to try to start posting a little bit more on Instagram, which is Shanae Fournier is just my uh, username. And I do have a YouTube channel. So so I would invite people to check that out. That's also just Shanae Fournier on YouTube. I haven't posted on there in probably about a year. But I have I think maybe 24 or 25 videos that people can um, listen to. Thank you so much, Shanae. It's been Thank a you. lovely hour together. Thank you, Andrea. I so appreciated this conversation. I just love your energy as well. So thank you for sharing a bit of your time with me. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> and from myself and the team here at Beyond the Reiki Gateway, we'd like to say thank you to our listeners for all of your support, including leaving great reviews, becoming BTRG insiders, and sharing this show with your friends and family. Drop us a line at info at beyondthereikigateway.com anytime. Tell us what's on your mind and take great care. Until next time. Thank you again for joining me. Please check the description underneath this video to learn more, connect with us, and get some important information about your listening experience. Wishing you all the best until we meet again beyond the Reiki Gateway.